thank you all for coming today. Um, it is my pleasure to host uh, um, uh, this discussion on cultural differences approaching open source software. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Izquierdo. I'll be uh, uh, you know, moderating this panel with these uh, three great uh, panelists today. Uh, a brief uh, context to why we are here and our journey. So uh, a few years ago, uh, together with Willem, um, uh, board member at the ASF and, and uh, working in, at the OSPO in Bidance. Uh, so we started having discussions on how to effectively engage people at the Inner Source Commons Foundation, I'm part of the Inner Source Commons Foundation, um, and how to effectively engage specifically Chinese uh, folks. Because there are cultural differences, then we, we love this topic, and then we started having some conversations. So we were sharing some, some books, for instance, The Culture Map, Myring Mayer is, is a good one, or a sociologist uh, analysis and a study from the Chinese society in the 40s, which is called From the Soil. So we were kind of creating a book club and having, having these discussions. Um, then uh, during this year, we, we met in Fosasi again. Um, we had the opportunity to have some discussions. And one of the very first things that happened to us is that we were in Hanoi, and we literally tried to cross the street. We couldn't. We didn't know how to do it. And then it happens that we saw a local person. And the way to cross a street in Hanoi, because it's so packed with traffic, is basically you raise your hand and you simply cross the street. So we learned that because there was a local person doing this. Um, and this is, this is basically something that we learn from a cultural perspective, how to cross the streets in Hanoi. What happens in open source is that we cannot do this because we don't see people, right? So we have interactions in a virtual way. So this discussion today is basically about how to effectively approach this, and in the case of open source um, communities. So I would like now to introduce, please introduce yourself, our great panelists. So Anna, maybe. Okay, so I go first. Mm -hmm. okay. Um Hajime Mase Minasan, Anna Des, Ano, Linux Foundation Project Manager Nito Stel, Linux Foundation Hatarei Teimas. I work at the Linux Foundation as project manager, and in there I have been uh, working, I had the pleasure to work uh, with a lot of um, developers and contributors coming from all around the world. So right now I uh, help this community of more than 3,000 uh, contributors that are spread across the United States, Canada, uh, a lot of European countries, a lot of APAC communities like China, Korea, Japan. Um, I'm originally from Spain, from Madrid, uh, but uh, because of my work, I get the pleasure and the opportunity to work with all different uh, cultures and, um, and, and countries all around the world. And thank you for a pleasure to be here. William. Hi, uh, my name is William Zhang, and uh, my Chinese name is uh, Zhang Ning, and uh, I'm sorry, I, I cannot speak uh, Japanese, but uh, um, uh, it's nice to uh, see a lot of uh, Asia face. And uh, um, for, uh, for my experiences, like, uh, I work for an uh, international company uh, and, uh, um, about 20 years ago, and then I get into uh, open source, and uh, I used to work for our Red Hat and uh, uh, Huawei and uh, now uh, ByteDance. And uh, uh, for my experiences, like uh, I spent uh, early 10 years to work with a lot of uh, 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 colleagues from Europe or from US and uh, on an engineering perspective. And uh, uh, I learned a lot uh, from the open source world. And when I come to the uh, big companies in China, it's really hard for me to convince them to adopt the open source uh, uh, culture. And uh, one of the responsibility in Oslo is like uh, we need to cultivate the open source culture. So I, uh, it's my pleasure to share my journey with you guys. And uh, yeah, let's keep the conversations going. Yeah, thank you. 
Sure. Um, mm -hmm. I'm Yuki. Uh, I am the, uh, the uh, senior architect at GitHub. At the same time, I serve as the vice president of the Inner Source Commons Foundation. So uh, Inner Source is the uh, kind of practice to adopt open source culture and methodologies uh, in an uh, enterprise. So actually, I'm driving the adoption of uh, Inner Source, in the, especially in the Japanese enterprise company, for instance, manufacturing industries. So yeah, yeah great to talk with you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for, for the introductions. By the way, a, a bit about me. So I'm, I'm, I'm running a company, a small company on development analytics called Vitoria. But I'm part of the Inner Source Commons, serving as president this year. Um, I'm at the board of the Chaos Community. It's a Linux Foundation project, Community Health Analytics for Open Source Software. And I serve at, as, as well at the uh, board level at the Pareto Foundation, which is open source for a higher, higher education. Um, okay, moving forward, so we just start with, with the first question, and we would like this to be a conversation with you as well. So please feel free to scan this and add a, uh, one word on what this is, uh, what, what does cultural differences mean for you? So this is, this is the first question I have for you. Um, you, you, you decide who starts, so basically what does cultural differences mean for you? Um. Yeah, I, I think I can, I can start. I mean, it's a tricky question, but I think um, when, when approaching to cultural difference, for me, it's how to approach the different communication, levels of communication and the different ways of communication uh, across different regions and across different uh, group of people. Uh, that's the, the most important side, right? Like the, the key word for me will be uh, definitely communication and challenges on and different levels of communication. For me, it's like uh, bring a curiosity of the cultural difference. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you don't realize you are talking to people who are not with the similar culture. And sometimes we just take it for granted. We used to think that way. It should be that way. But uh, it takes time to build the cultural awareness. And uh, by reading book, by talking to the people, you will get know about that. And uh, this is also a very interesting topic if we want to communicate, if we want to collaborate together. We have to cross that kind of river <laughs> or build the bridges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I agree with Willem, so uh, curiosity. But actually, it's very hard to uh, capture the cultural differences in one word, actually, to be honest. So uh, in open source world, there, uh, for instance, person to uh, company collaboration at, at the same time, company to company collaboration happen in the open source world. So actually, processes are uh, actually uh, in, injected in the collaboration and also the, as well as the cultural differences. So mm -hmm. yeah, okay, uh, I, I think we need to uh, capture the cultural differences from the various angles. Yeah, that's my understanding. I will, I will vote with one. Okay, so oh. we we'll start having some, some things here. Um, we discussed while we were preparing the panel on certain topics and certain concepts, for instance, in the Japanese culture. So maybe you can, you can elaborate a bit more. Sure. Um, as many people mentioned about the word language, so mm -hmm. actually a language hurdle is very high when it comes to um, contributing to the open source uh, project. So actually, um, but uh, nowadays, um, there are so many uh, generative AI um, support for <laughs> language translation. So it's very, uh, hurdle is nowadays a bit lower. But um, uh, when it comes to the synchronized communication, like uh, in a meeting or um, other uh, chatting with uh, uh, members, uh, it's still hard. So uh, we need to utilize the uh, async collaboration at the same time, the synchronized co collaboration, and then uh, we need to con uh, to take care of the uh, variety of attendees and uh, participants from the open source world. So, but um, in Japan, actually, um, yeah, actually Japanese, uh, even Japanese only speaker can now contribute the uh, in English easily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want us to add something? 
Yeah, I, I, I think we share the similar uh, situations in China. It's like uh, um, uh, for the English is uh, like a second language. A lot of engineer uh, who is good at writing English, but uh, the oral English uh, they may not mm -hmm. good, good. And uh, so that could be a challenge. But uh, I, I think um, join the conference like like this since uh, you 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 have to use uh, English. Mm -hmm. And uh, first, uh, um, I'm from our software foundations. The the we uh, encourage uh, all the projects uh, are using English as a, a default language. But uh, there's a lot of project origin from China. There's a lot of uh, user bases uh, uh, in China. They prefer to use uh, Chinese, but. Uh, um, we encourage people to use the English. It's like uh, uh, you will attract more people, and uh, with the help of a lot of tools, it's not uh, very difficult. And uh, yeah, with, with the generative AI, especially the big language mo uh, model, it, it, it's, it's really uh, helpful to, to you. And uh, I think it's just give you a good reason to practice English. <laughs> Uh, indeed, so now we have we have some topics that the audience has been sharing, so thank you for this. We have things as uh, adaptation difference, community localization, mindset about altruism, differences on corporate culture. Is any of you interested in sharing some more thoughts? So we have a microphone. Who would like to? No? Okay, so the, the channel is open, so feel free to simply <laughs> talk and share your thoughts. So this is, this is good to, for, for sharing. Okay, um, going back to the to the slides. So we have now the four questions that we would like to address during during the day. So the second one, and um, focusing a bit more into day-to-day -day operations. Um, so how how do you run meetings? Because you have this cultural sensit sensitivity. We can say you work with big corporations, but then at the same time you work one you know. One to one in some meetings, one to one in some meetings. So how how do you make meetings more comfortable? Yep. So um, actually, when you were talking about the language, I just came to my mind uh, a really common situation I have in in the community I I run in Linux Foundation that is uh, the Tutor Group. Uh, so in there, I I have to engage with APAC community calls, EMEA community calls, and AMR community calls. And the way I usually run those are, are kind of different. Like for instance, uh, when I started here, something that I noticed is that uh, people more in Western countries, and I will see not even in Europe, but more for Americas, uh, from North America, are more of like pro meetings, like let's have a one-on-one in, uh, let's have a Zoom call, let's let's talk, and it's more verbal communication. While in APAC, maybe it's because of a language barrier or even because they are more comfortable working a sync, uh, but they are not so much of let's have bi-weekly meetings, no? So the, the way of operating is more if, if we have some sort of Zoom call or something, uh, for instance, when I'm uh, moderating or helping in an, an APAC calls, I uh, try to write everything on the chat. I turn off, turn on the, um, how is it called? Um, the uh, captive, the, the captions, mm -hmm. so people can read, even though they are not so good, but at least people can read. And I know that if I say, are there any questions, and there are people from Western world, they, they will stand up and they will make this APAC community quiet. So I try also my best to encourage people like, if you have questions, if you want to chat, we can have the conversation later. You can reach out to me or you can reach out via direct message because I, I understand that sometimes they won't say that upfront. Um, so, even like it's the same community, it's the tutor group community, because we are worldwide, the way of operating or the way I prepare my meetings for the community are completely different when I'm talking also, for instance, with uh, Latin America 
community that there are also different ways of operating Europe. In Europe, there are also different ways. So yeah, I'll say that's some of the best practices. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I'd like to add, it, add to it. So actually, even you are fluent in uh, English, actually, uh, it's hard to um, attend every meeting in a different time zone. So if the uh, meeting is uh, in a midnight, actually, you, you can't join the meeting. So actually, the documentation matters, I think. So and also the giving the feedback that your opinion is hard is very uh, important because um, people are e easy to leave the community or maybe con uh, from the contribution. So and, um, um, the sense of the feeling that uh, probably I'm not uh, I I'm ignored uh, in this community uh, will um, contribute a lack of the transparency. So um, yeah, for transparent decision making and then documenting in the uh, open open way is very important to keep the uh, relationship very good. Oh, yeah, um, uh, for my uh, experience, is like I prefer the old-fashioned way email. <laughs> uh, it's a it's a, a sync and uh, it's uh, our. You, you, you can uh, revisit the words and uh, make, make it more uh, appropriate. And uh, um, so, so sometimes you can get some help from the AI. And, uh, uh, but uh, um, th these are thing, uh, things is like uh, you need to bear in mind. You need only have uh, uh, one shot uh, per day. So uh, in this way, you have to prepare the, all the contacts in, in an email and uh, take take a good chance of these things, uh, because uh, um, as we uh, work uh, in different time zones, and uh, it's very hard for us to find the right time. Uh, so oh, we have a question. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, but they are oh, there, so okay. I'll take this. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Um, oh, yes, should, yeah. Thank you. So something I, I notice, and I, I don't always do well, um, is hierarchy or power distance. Um, I'm quite a senior person now, um, but in Western societies, often it's quite easy for a junior person to speak up, um, but it can be much more difficult in, in other cultures. And so I think one of the things we need to do as senior people is to find ways to encourage people. And I find what you're talking about saying it's not always easy to do it synchronously, sometimes getting the junior people to speak up asynchronously may make it easier for them and for their bosses, I suppose, as well. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, with the mailing list, uh, that that's could be a very good way because uh, uh, there's an archive. And uh, if anyone wants to get know the context, he can jump at any time. So I think it's just uh, uh, open a door for the people who are interested about those things. And for me, uh, I'm, now I'm quite interested in, uh, uh, about the to-do group, and, but I didn't attend the meeting. But if we go to the meeting, uh, meeting minutes, they are uh, well written down, and I know what people are talking about. And if there is someone who is interested about that, who is still interested about that, I can get in touch with them. So in this way, we can keep the communications more easily. And that is the way I prefer it. And uh, we have a lot of uh, conversations in Apache Software Foundation. It's like there's a, some new kinds of uh, communication uh, tools, just like Discord. And uh, for the new generation, they, they're quite uh, keen to that part. But first, it's like uh, we need to keep all the uh, things record, recorded. So that's the principle. But I think with these pr principles, we can adapt to, to the new tools. Yeah, it's, yeah, another question. Thank you. Maybe not necessarily a question, maybe an addition. Uh, you know, as we were talking about, for example, the Asian communities are having the junior people trouble speaking up. It reminded me, and I think this is maybe where we can look for inspiration to other communities of the airline industry. Mm -hmm. There were, in the past, causes of crashes, of airline crashes, because there was a problem, but the junior officer was afraid to speak up, not to disturb you know, the senior captain. Mm. And there was, once this was discovered, there was of course a industry-wide attempt to you know, add in additional courses and kind of work against it. So kind of maybe, kind of you know, 
maybe are there like any other communities that we can maybe look for inspiration in this? So I, I think it, we, we can open the discussion on hierarchy because mm -hmm. you mentioned this and now here again. Um, we, we had a conversation that typically open source communities are certainly, depending on the community, flat structure. So then people are initially, so the point is how easy it is for a Western to speak up? Typically it's easy. If you go to other cultures, maybe it's not that easy. And that depends a lot on who is in the meeting and, and basically how comfortable you feel being part of this. So for instance, we, uh, we discover, we learn uh, that in, um, in Western societies, so you are an isolated individual, you can join a community, you learn, you make maybe some uh, professional friends, and you live, and that's okay. While in Chinese communities, well, you can explain more the ring. Yeah, yeah, approach. yeah. Um, we have the ring circle uh, word. It's like uh, I highly recommend the the, the book uh, uh, from the soil, and uh, um, it, it explains the uh, Chinese society. It's like uh, there's a lot of uh, relationships we we prefer, and uh, there's a certain kind of standard, and uh, it's built up the uh, society and. Uh, um, first, it's like uh, uh, we need to show the respect to the senior and uh, and follow certain kind of rules ab about that. Uh, I think the most important thing is that there's a lot of relationships we need to uh, build. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, for the open source world, um, you don't need to know any anybody before you do the contributions. So you, you don't need to have the uh, permission. So so that is um, one. Uh, uh, um, Call for actions is like uh, if you want to join the community, just like the to do groups or the uh, inner source commons, just uh, uh, raise your hand to find the contributions if you can do. And uh, uh, for me, uh, I work for uh, uh, ASF for a very long time, and uh, um, nobody um, um, gave, gave me the permissions to, to say, you, you, you need to do it that way. It's like I need to find the uh, work. I prefer to do, and if it can bring the benefits to the community, everyone will recognize you. And especially when they are uh, uh, sending a vote. Uh, I, I run in the, the uh, uh, board of the director for three years, and it's like, uh, um, if you are doing the uh, right things, and if you, what you do uh, bring the values to the community, everyone saw that, they, they went into <laughs> vote for you. So, so, so it's, it's kind of more easier for first. And uh, um, so we don't need to um, go through the hierarchy mm -hmm. uh, system. And uh, I, I think it's made those things more easier. But you just need to bear in mind it's a different culture. We, we can embrace that. Yeah, so it's, I would say it's a lot on onboarding newcomers and, and teaching them this is the way how you can behave here, right? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. you, keep, you were gonna sure. Say. Um, yeah, uh, I'd like to mention about the importance of inner source. So, <laughs> to be honest, actually, some company try to uh, bring their own internal hierarchy or maybe culture to open source, even if you're uh, contributing to the open source project as a team, or maybe you're a fresh start your uh, open source project from scratch. So, uh, so many projects uh, were born as, for instance, in internal software in the company, and then try to be. Uh, are open source, but actually uh, in that transition, actually so many people try to bring their own uh, culture or hierarchy, but uh, actually open source world is kind of very marital culture, I think. So um, yeah, actually uh, it's very uh, important to practice uh, how to be open source in, in even your, uh, your project is internal project, and then to be ready for open source. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Anna, you want to say? Yeah, and, and online with what uh, Yuki mentioned, um, I feel I feel also in in most in companies or more traditional sector, uh, we uh, and this is I'm speaking from what I learned in, in in Spain, but maybe can be applied in in other countries. The fear of failing uh, is really hard. I mean, when when I get into open source. I, I had to learn that making mistakes was a good thing. And I think that one of the patterns of inner source or one of the principles of inner source is trying to teach internally that ser is good, that failing, it's an opportunity of learning instead of a way to fall. 
um, just some mm. thoughts on that. Yeah. I'll, I'll, oh, you want to? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I just want to encourage people and um, don't uh, are afraid to make the mistake. But uh, here's the thing: don't fail. Uh, the same mistake twice. So, 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 <laughs> so, so it's uh, just the uh, balance. And uh, uh, first, it's like uh, um, uh, for the Asian people, it's a bit of shy, shy, mm -hmm. and uh, we are not comfortable to uh, show our short hands to uh, uh, short points to the people. But uh, um, it's like uh, it's a learning pro process, and uh, if we can just uh, try. Our best and uh, don't um, make the similar mistake again. That I think it's in a good track, and uh, um, so 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 please uh, 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 try to do some contributions, and uh, you don't need to uh, have the permissions from the senior management, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, you you need to uh, uh, revisit it and uh, just make sure it's in a good track. And uh, if you make uh, improvement, you will get a lot of recognitions, and uh, you will have the confidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and align with all of this. So part of the discussion um, is okay. So now we have we are having meetings. Now its next step is how do we agree, right? How do we agree with others, and how do we really? notice that we agree here or the other way around is basically how do we notice if there is disagreement so an example here is my experience i'm based in spain so i'm originally from spain where we are quite direct when communicating and expressing basically positive or negative feedback um, so my own experience bringing here to the to the audience is first time we were doing business with the us with with us and basically american people um, uh, what, what in Spain is an okay is yes, good to go, seems good. In US, it basically means kind of less. It's not that good. So if someone tells you this is okay, it's like yeah, I don't like that that much. So it took me a few years, literally, to notice that there was certain disagreement in the conversation. Um, so going and, and specifically in the culture map, of the book, they mention that there is this uh, you know more uh, really super explicit communication, more more. Uh, 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 being explicit when you are communicating with others, like in the US, and the more you move to the east, basically you start reading the air. So, and then up to when we reach Japan, the specifically dimension of the, the example of Japan, where you really need to read the air to get the feeling of what's going on in the conversation, because maybe if not, you don't know. So, how do you notice this agreement? How can you, you know, how are you able to, to do these things? Some, some hints? Um. Yeah, it's very hard to notice the disagreement in a group chat. So actually, uh, you need to ping them uh, individually. <laughs> so mm -hmm. they're uh, starting from the very uh, basic conversation and uh, how you doing, or maybe um, what what you want to do for uh, in the community. Those kind of very small conversation is very important to notice the very small, tiny things. Yeah, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah uh, for so uh, it's like we are not prefers to. Do a direct uh, conversations to point someone's mistake is like uh, just to save the face, but uh, I think uh, you can just bring a very useful to 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 have the in person conversations mm -hmm. to make sure we are in the same page. Um, but uh, it's like uh, but in the open source community, it's like uh, um, it's a, a common cases if the, someone just points you. Oh, I I I actually I can share my 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 journey mm -hmm. the first times i i get the minus one from from the code review it's kind of shock to me oh. <laughs> but yeah. i think this is the common cases if you want to uh, as a as a, a, a newbie if you want to get mm -hmm. your pr accept you need to go through that process so 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 my my advice for the people especially asia People don't take it into person, and uh, and uh, um, it's really um, it's a really good opportunity. You get a lot of mentorship from the senior uh, from, from from the senior developers, and they uh, just try to help us to write a maintenance ball code. When I work as a, a key keeper of the projects I used to work for eight years, it's like. Uh, I always want to share the this kind of uh, informations uh, to release my burden. If the people get know how to write the maintenance code, 
we can get it uh, be merged uh, as soon as possible. So, so, so uh, my uh, recommendations uh, for the Asian peoples is like uh, take this uh, good opportunity and uh, um, uh, don't take it in person. <laughs> And I just uh, remember uh, a one fun story I had when uh, trying to merge a pull request. And I was talking with a developer from Mexico. OK, uh, Spain and Mexico, we, we serve the language. But the kind of communication is quite different. In Mexico, they are more, uh, we, we are more direct compared to uh, uh, people in Mexico. So uh, I just ask, hey, wh when, when do you have a time to uh, take a look at the review I provided uh, via Slack? And that person said, um, in Spanish, ahorita. Mm -hmm. So it's like now, in, in Spanish from Spain and in Spanish from Mexico is now. But in Mexico, ahorita, that is now. So I was thinking, oh, today this person is going to review it. It takes one week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because this ahorita for them means, yes, I will do it. But mm -hmm. I had to, I mean, I, I, at the very beginning, I, I didn't know that. I learned from that. So mm -hmm. a best practice, I will say, will be don't get anything, like don't think, ask and, and say, OK, uh, how how much would you take exactly? Like be more explicit, and in in a in a humble way, of course, try to get more information uh, to be sure that even though we are speaking the same language, their ahorita means our ahorita. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's a very good good point. Um, so and then probably moving into into the last of the of the questions that we have for today, another experience is specifically when I was talking to with Willem uh, on, on these topics. Um, last year was my first time in mainland China, so I went to Beijing, and then I tried to have since or well, for a few years tried to connect with with the Chinese community. It was basically when I opened a WeChat account that suddenly communication happened. So that was kind of okay. So I need to be in WeChat just to have this specific communication with people, at least with the people I'm, I'm talking. And that was super useful to me. So from a tool perspective, uh, do you have any advice on how to deal you know, with tools across different regions, experiences you would like to share? Who would like to start? OK, yeah, OK. Um, actually, for, for WeChat, I, I can explain something. See, it's like uh, everyone's uh, in China, they have the phone, they have the WeChat. Yeah. So it's quite easy for people to get touch. But here's the thing. For WeChat, you cannot, uh, if you join the group, you cannot read the history message. That could be uh, uh, most challenging things. And from from the Apache Software Foundation perspectives, we <laughs> we need to keep all the things in, in record. For, uh, this is for the transparency. Mm -hmm. And But if you want to get touch people in person, it should be fine. And uh, um, if you want to get touch with the communities, more like uh, uh, we just need to, uh, if there's uh, some small talk, it should be fine. But uh, if this comes to a uh, major decision and you want to be more inclusive, I highly recommend to the go mailing list. <laughs> All the other things, just like uh, the GitHub issues, and uh, to, to keep it in a, a record and uh, to, to make sure so everyone can see that. And uh, that is the key part I want to mention. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I think it's very important to have a uh, multiple channel to communicate. So actually, um, for instance, uh, for some open source project, they adopt a Discord for communication. But um, for some companies, di installing Discord in the company's laptop is not allowed. So uh, actually, um, it's very uh, important to, like just Willem said that, um, to set a mainstream, main channel to uh, make a decision or maybe to uh, have a conversation about the uh, main topics. But um, at least you have to be very open in the collaboration in the other channel to, and uh, always trying to bring those people into the mainstream. So yeah, um, yeah, that's the thing, I think. Mm -hmm. OK, uh, yeah, there is a question there. there. Yeah. Thank you. 
Uh, not a question, just oh, comment. just comment yes. or uh, my perspective on it, on working with developers all worldwide, and now uh, mainly uh, with Chinese because I work with Ning William here. So uh, the the non Chinese developers, they are each one have their own way of communication, and since I work with them, some of them are more active on X, some are more active on LinkedIn, some are more active on whatever you pick it, right? But I want them to contribute because like, you know, that's what we want, that's that's what our OSPO, I, I also belong to OSPO. But then, most of the projects that we are right now getting developers to work on, our maintainers are based in China. <laughs> So they prefer <laughs> to work on Lark or WeChat, but then for uh, record keeping, they have to be on GitHub, right? Mm -hmm. So then coming back to that same thing, like get them to say, hey, you know, our developer uh, is asking a question. Can you please respond on X? Or to the developer, and, you know, this maintainer prefers to talk on Y. So can you reach out to them on why. So kind of make those conversations, but then make them, direct them to the main GitHub, because that's where the record keeping happens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if like you know, I make sense there. Yeah, sorry. GitHub is uh, uh, not accessible sometimes in China, so the developers may need to use a VPN to access mm -hmm. GitHub, and yeah. uh, VPN is not uh, allowed in China either. So maybe that's one of the reasons. Mm. Yeah, I would say each, each of the projects, and, and maybe you can serve, so we have like four minutes now left. But, um, so I would say that each, each open source project, it decides what are the tools you are going to use. Yeah. Depending on the tools and everything, then basically you are... Uh, I'm working on both sides. I'm trying to work on both yeah. sides and like agreeing on one main channel, which all the parties, but I then... Yeah, I would say if, if if that's explicitly made and documented somewhere, then it's it's mainly a discussion on if you are coming here, if you are, if you are coming here to the project, then these are the tools that we are using, processes, discussions, and everything. Um, and based on this, then it, it's basically a discussion in the project to say what is what we have to do if we want to be more open or more welcoming, or bring in more people from different. Uh, different countries and so on. So, for instance, maybe we should be in GitHub and GT because we have the VPN. So maybe we are, um, uh, you know, not letting others in China to access that specific code. So that that depends. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I I just want to mention so the main channel is quite important because uh, uh, we just need to keep the people uh, in focus, uh, especially for a small uh, project. They may be active in ten people, and uh, but if we. Uh, get touch all the channels, that could be a challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah I just wanted to mention, so for instance, in, in Twitter we had also that issue. Um, I, I, I know that you mentioned of mirroring, like not just be on GitHub, but also share it on other channels. It's really important, the same content. And also, uh, I think, Suyata, uh, you, you also asked somehow as an ambassador or as a linchpin, and I think that role is really, really important to have these local ambassadors. So you don't have to, to everyone make actions on everything, mm -hmm. but having ambassadors that are able to connect and to say, okay, we don't have this information on WeChat, but there is a local ambassador that can translate that information and a global community can have access uh, in their own language, in their own channels as well. So I think the, the role of local ambassadors or local, yeah, I would say ambassadors are really important. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a bit opinionated, but actually uh, using a distribution list or mailing list is still very uh, beneficial for uh, the open source community. And also, it's very, nowadays, uh, easy to summarize the uh, meeting agenda or maybe meeting notes uh, by using generative AI. So let's 
put it, put them in the mailing list, and uh, probably uh, that make it very easy for them to understand everybody to understand uh, what's going on in the community. And also, uh, you you can just uh, summarize the Slack communication or maybe other uh, WeChat and other communication by just a uh, copy and pasting thing. So, yeah. So let's use generative AI <laughs> to summarize it. <laughs> yeah. um, thank you. So. Um, Last comment here, so then we finish for, for today because we have a minute. We are trying to land all of this in written form. Um, we are thinking of having a chapter in the book for OSPOs that is run under uh, Spology in the to-do group. So all your feedback and comments is super welcome. So this is a GitHub discussion. Please scan the QR or add there your thoughts, comments, suggestions, plus one, minus one. With, uh, <laughs> with certain uh, things. Um, and that's it. So uh, we have to finish now. Thank you for your time. Thank you, the panelists, for the great discussion. And thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you.